No, no puedo, Hunter. You know, uh, maybe you don't know, but last weekend I went and saw a film, it was a documentary, um, called Miners Shot Down. It was about the uh, Americana incident that happened uh, uh, last year, middle of last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, uh, there a couple of things I need to say. First of all, I've seen a lot of films in my life. In fact, I'm one of those uh, people that love, ever since I was a kid, watch films, you know. When I say a kid, I mean, we're talking about in the, in the mid-50s in the South Bronx when we had the Bronx movie theater and we had the, right around the, right around the thing there, we had the, the, the RKO movie theater and then another, right, within walking distance, you had the Lowe's movie theater. And uh, say that the, the Lowe's and the RKO was the big guys, and they would show they would show two features, but the Bronx movie theater would show three features, you know, including serials and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. In fact, I was I'm such a, 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 a cinephobe or whatever, cine, 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 whatever they cine or something, that uh, when I was you know I ran away from home one time when I was nine years old. I spoiled my perfect attendance record for that school year, but I ran away from home and I had my bags packed. And that's just early in the morning, I guess about six, five o'clock, whatever. And I ran to the Bronx movie theater. It wasn't open yet, I was just sitting there waiting for it to open. And the cop came by. Oh, young man, what doing? Remember, this is the 50s, so it looked different in the late 50s. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what you doing? I'm running away from home. <laughs> mm-hmm. I said, well, why don't we come to you? Where, where do you live? Uh, so, took my hand, you know, took me back home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, my grandmother was upset. It's fine. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, I've seen a lot of films. I mean, it, it, I'm, I'm so, in, 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 in the mid to late 60s, so many films. I mean, one time, in fact, one time, uh, because New York had these revival houses, I actually saw, in a 24 hour period, I saw something like seven films, including the six and a half hour Russian version of War and Peace. Mm. I mean, I'm, so, I'm such a film person that not only did I see Birth of a Nation, D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation, which, which unleashed all this stuff about the Klan and stuff like that, made it popular. I also saw his, his film that, to, to answer that, which was Intolerance, which is an amazing film. I mean, I've seen film. In fact, my undergraduate uh, degree is in uh, uh, urban communications and uh, English literature, but part of that is film studies. So I've seen a lot of films, a lot of docu- documentaries, foreign films. Mm-hmm. I, was on a, I was on a South Korean kick, a China kick, and I've seen a lot of films. A lot of documentaries. But I tell you, when I saw this, mine is shot down. I was playing at one o'clock in the afternoon, and I guess it ended about three, I got home about four. I couldn't do any work. Mm-hmm. I literally could not read, uh, you know, Pablo Ferrer. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't read. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. I, was, I won't say paralyzed, but I was devastated. Mm-hmm. Now, now you say, well, it's a South African film was was was, was, was a documentary, big deal. Nobody cries with doc. Well, maybe do public private documentaries. But the thing was, as a person uh, like all of us who was part of the struggle, now with I have struggled credentials. Mm-hmm. You know, I said, well, no, I wasn't. I was down the streets of New York. In fact, there's a picture of me in every, everybody's magazine. There's a picture of me with a time. Our partake equals hate. You know, you know, I'm dodging cops and signing petitions for divestment and blah, 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 and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, you know, in fact, the modern movement against the party was truly a global movement. Everybody, everybody. So for me, you watch this kind of film, and then what was so devastating is to see what happened. I'm not going to, I will spoil the film if you want to, but I mean, you go through the whole film, but the most, the thing about a film, especially for me, you, you have to watch the whole, a whole a film in one sitting, that's the proper way. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of stuff about Americans come out in the news, little clips here and there, and there but, you, but when you're sitting there watching a film in an environment with other people, and you hear them reacting all through the film. And then at the end, and this is what really devastated me. You have this sister who was the head of the police at the time. And 
And at the end of this whole thing, she has all her troops, you know, one of those uh, squares that the military does. And she's talking to them. Now, this is after like 34 miners are killed, shot down. Mm. And she actually says to them, You did a good job. Sure. Now, you, the, 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 look, let me, let me go back. Now, I lived in Langa, the, the first township in, in, in Cape Town. And uh, they did have the memorial there for the brothers that were shot, shot down. And back in those days, you know, you, they would have the black policeman with the spring pot hitting the crowd. And then the white policeman would be back <laughs> with the gun. But to go through all that stuff at the end, to hear her say, basically, you police, you know, you know boars, brothers, sisters, coloreds, whatever, Indians, did a good job. To me, she's like saying, this sister saying, you did a good job killing those brothers. My sister said, you did, no, no. So that upset me too much. I mean, I, that's, I think that's what really did, because you're, 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 you bring to the film all of your experiences of how you struggle, then for this to happen, boom, boom. I'm not picking on South Africa because what else is happening in the world? We don't talk about Haiti. No way is talking about Haiti. But Haiti has a situation where there's this military force that's headed by this sister from Trinidad and Tobago. And this military force has, you know, folks from uh, Uruguay, which is a favorite, you know, at least the president of Uruguay is cool, you know, Uruguay. Uh, all, all these from all over. And this sister heads this force, uh, Brazil, is it, man, to basically shut down the Haitian people. The, their military there not to uh, provide help to prevent cholera, or whatever it is. It's the same thing that this military seems to me that this sister heading, you know. And then I look and I say, well, you know, at least in the United States, the last few years, you had sisters headed of the state departments and stuff like that. But who are they doing the bidding for? And, and, and the struggle continues, a little continue, of course. It continues for me. So I have to reprocess this thing. And I can't do it so that's, that I say that uh, I have to come out against these sisters or against whatever I have to. I really have to say, I have to take another thing because it would anger me too much. It would, it would devastate, it would paralyze my movement. So I have to readjust my brain and this is what I've been trying to do. And I just met with some, some brothers that I'm helping out in Dumbaza. And uh, I got a plan. But we all need a plan. Because they got a plan and they study their plan and they do their plan. And So anyway, this is one of those dispatches from the Arch Director Emeritus, from me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to the bed, letting you know what I only suspect. Mm.